in terms of my professional job is seeing how libraries can support local artists themselves. There's a lot of intersection right now between what's happening in the comics world and what's happening in libraries. This is Joseph Coco. I'm at ALA 2018 here in New Orleans on behalf of Becky Hilburn's Art Process blog. Uh, and YouTube channel, of course. If you could introduce yourself, Kathy. Uh, my name is Kathy Shaw Green. I'm the executive director of an organization called Library Link NJ. We're a statewide cooperative of over 2,000 libraries in New Jersey of all types public, school, university, and college, corporate libraries, medical libraries, even prison libraries. Wow. So, um, you have uh, a lot of responsibilities, it sounds like. So what's your, your main role um, uh, with, with those libraries? Uh, what my organization does, Library Link NJ, is we provide services that connect libraries together. So we do things like uh, help get um, resources from one library into another through physical delivery. So okay. if you want something at one library, but it's at another, we provide the delivery service that gets it to you so you can use it for free. Um, we also provide professional development for librarians to kind of broaden their horizons as staff, and we're interested in staff at all levels in libraries. Um, we also do innovation projects, again, to kind of expand the idea of what a library can be because libraries are changing so rapidly in their mission from just kind of depositories of stuff to um, creators of experiences for people. Right. So that whole A lot more idea, programming, family programming, adult Right. Adults, programming is part of that. It's the idea of the library as a community center, whether that community is a school, or a town, or a university, or a company. Okay. And your company also helps um, orchestrate some of that programming, or you focus mostly on the exchanges like you were talking about? We, we help provide uh, kind of inspiration for doing a variety of programming. Okay. So we provide the resources to people to kind of help kickstart them into doing something new. Gotcha. That sounds amazing. So uh, it sounds like you would be a great fit for somebody at ALA, but I'm curious, uh, what are your primary motivations when you're walking around the floor uh, representing? Um, what I look for is, I'm always looking for the new and what the trends are in libraries so we can share that with our member libraries. Okay. Um, so and just so, staying in the know, basically? Yeah, kind of keeping keeping up to date with what's happening in the field. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that it's that intersection here of, of uh, content of what people are looking for in terms of the stories they want to tell, whether that's fiction or nonfiction or information and then the methods that they use to get that information. I saw a really interesting presentation yesterday on a technology that allows you to, or as students particularly, to rapidly read through technology uh, uh, material for uh, homework projects and then create digital flashcards to test themselves on material. Right. So all they're, as an they're app producing from their, their phone. own study aids. Yeah, basically. it was yeah. it was fascinating. So bringing kind of the global right into your hand mm -hmm. uh, through technology. It's it's a fascinating time to be working in a library and to be a librarian. Right. So a library uh, in in that retro in that respect would be uh, giving them access to those tools so that they could... Um, yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you're old enough to remember, there was a book in the 70s, I believe, called The Whole Earth Catalog. Okay. And it was, it was kind of basically like the internet before there was an internet. It was just information on lots of different things, but the subtitle was called Access to Tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what libraries do for people. They give them access to tools, whether that's to create their own zine at the library, uh, 
write a book, do a research paper, uh, do a presentation, do a resume to get a job. Uh, it's whatever the customer needs, libraries can help help in that process, whatever the end result is. Okay. Uh, you're definitely a fan of comics. Oh, uh, yeah. I've seen you walking around the Artist Alley a bit here at ALAAC. Um, can you tell me what got you uh, started um, uh, collecting artwork from, from female artists? Um, well, I've uh, always been interested in art, and particularly art by women because it speaks to me. And so when I was kind of coming up uh, and uh, reading particularly a lot of underground women's comics, yeah. I got really excited about that. Did a little bit of cartooning myself at that time. Sure. But mainly I'm kind of a reader of comics, an appreciator, and my niche is to support women artists. It just helps give me focus and it's what I enjoy doing. So I like, uh, particularly at ALA and other shows, talking to artists. I have a sketchbook which is being worked on right now. Uh, live in the background. Right, live, right here on your podcast. Uh, uh, Becca is doing a piece for me in my sketchbook. And uh, uh, I enjoy that as a vehicle for interacting with artists, yeah. seeing their work, and again, seeing the diversity of work that's being done. Okay. Uh, the other thing I really like in terms of my professional job is seeing how libraries can support local artists themselves. There's a lot of intersection right now between what's happening in the comics world and what's happening in libraries. Libraries are sponsoring their own comic cons and yep. involving local artists. Uh, they're very involved in Free Comic Book Day in May. Yeah, and that's how that's how a lot of conventions get started in libraries. Really? I'm told that uh, they essentially try to partner with a comic book store uh, who's doing Free Comic Book Day and just kind of merge the two together. Um, I don't know how complicated that is in terms of the paperwork or anything like that uh, to form a partnership with a company, but uh, I've I've heard from. Uh, librarians that that is uh, one of the easiest ways to get started with your local it is and it's a natural partnership yeah. because it supports the store by promoting their access to, to comics for the, the local community and it supports the library by bringing in sometimes a whole different group of people yeah um, and might it not supports go to the library every day yeah, yeah exactly and it supports local artists who get involved with doing drawings for people or doing workshops mm -hmm. uh, we've been involved with our own local library in Collingswood New Jersey bringing artists in and doing Fantastic. workshops for kids and adults about comics and uh, when I was a library director we did that as well and started uh, with comics programming that way. And uh, it was a great partnership. Okay. I'd like so, to talk a little bit, if I could, unless you had a, another question about that. No, that's fine. About Please. how artists can um, connect with their own libraries. Yeah. Um, the easiest thing to do is probably talk to the youth services people. It might be a children's librarian. There might be a teen librarian and find somebody in the library that's excited about comics but it could really be at any level it could be the library director is excited about comics comics are unnatural because libraries support literacy and reading particularly for young children coming up uh, many times before kids go to school, they learn about books and learn about reading through their interactions with story times at local libraries. Uh, so starting locally and seeing if you can find that person excited about comics and art uh, is a good place to start. And do you think but, it's best to go into the library and talk to the youth director uh, or youth services director in person or email is better, phone calls, what, in your experience? Uh, I would start out in person Okay. Um, and don't just dis get discouraged if the first person you talk to isn't necessarily the right person yeah. or even if your local library isn't particularly supportive about comics at that point. There are a lot of different levels in libraries. 
Uh, if it does, you don't start well with one place, you go to a neighboring library. You don't have to feel restricted just to your own town uh, because every community has libraries. Uh, and don't just restrict yourself to community public libraries. School libraries are very often very interested in comics as an art form. Yeah. Community colleges, universities. So there are lots of levels of getting entry. Um, something that I work a lot with are people at the regional and state level. Because every state library uh, has uh, a youth services person. So let's say in your own local community, you're just not finding a lot of interest about comics. Call your state library, find out who the person is that deals with youth programming and uh, talk to them because they'll be in the know about what's happening on more of a regional or statewide basis. And again, the trick is to find people who are excited about it and connect with them. And then that opens you up to a whole network of people who would appreciate comics and comics programming in libraries. Okay. Also, every library state uh, in the uh, country has a library association. In my case, it's the New Jersey Library Association, but just Google Library Association in your state name, you'll pop up with a website. Talk to the executive director and again find out who are the people that are doing the children's programs at the state association yeah. conferences or the teen programs or even the adult programs because you don't have to restrict comics just to kids. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of adults like me who are passionate about comics. For sure. Yeah. I mean, just looking around at comic book conventions, you can see lots of adults who are oh very gosh. excited about comics. Yeah. Not yeah. just because they have children. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so yesterday also you mentioned uh, that uh, some of the youth services directors, certainly at a local level, are volunteers. So that might be something you might have to hunt around a little bit for because it might not be an officially posted position, say on the website or in uh, brochures or things like that. Um, so that's don't be discouraged if you don't find a youth services director on the website or someone might not know who it is because it could just be a volunteer, right? Right, especially in library associations, most of the work for a conference gets done by volunteer librarians yeah. uh, who work in a library but volunteer for their library association to do the programming. Okay. The other thing that I don't see a lot at the state level but I've started to see the last few years at the national level at ALA, the American Library Association, is Artists Alley, which is actively soliciting artists to come show their work, talk to people about what they do. I think that would be a great idea at a state library association. Yeah. It's, uh, it doesn't cost anything except providing tables and chairs. Yeah. The artists bring their enthusiasm and their work and their wares to show. Yeah, it's and a unique perspective for the librarians to be able to talk to the creators and it can help right. them get programming rolling uh, right. if you're speaking directly to the person right. who, who illustrated or wrote the book. So if you're somebody who does programming at a state association, consider incorporating artists into your state library conference. I think it would be a a really fun addition that your members would really appreciate. Yeah, and it works fantastic at ALA. I don't know how long they've been doing it, but I mean, Just we came here three years, years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and all the artists that we've talked to who have come uh, even before we first went in 2015 uh, have said it's a phenomenal place just to get, like, reach the people that you're trying to get your books in the libraries because you can beat your head against the wall for a while trying to contact people here and there or whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, which is why it was great to hear you, some of your advice on um, contacting people at a state level or a, a region level mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. um, we have tried to contact individuals and have had varying success with it. So I'm glad to hear that uh, it's th there are other avenues and not to just give up. That Yeah, don't get discouraged if the first people you talk to aren't encouraging. Not everybody is as enthusiastic about comics as we are. Um, 
but just you know keep trying to find that right person all you have to do is find one person and they'll lead you to others okay so we talked a little bit about uh, trying to get some programming involved and maybe trying to uh, get into some of the uh, artist alleys and things like that at uh, 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 library and conventions and things. Uh, what advice would you have to people who are just trying to get their, their book in libraries? Um, uh, like Becca had talked about, uh, we've had uh, her book, Seven Inch Care, go into special collections at a few different libraries, which people definitely do browse special collections, but uh, if uh, a mom who's overworked is just looking for a book for their child, they might not necessarily look in special collections to um, get them uh, something that can entertain them and uh, have some quality to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. how, would you, uh, how would you advise people reaching out to libraries and getting their book where it belongs uh, in the library? Uh, I would try a couple of different ways. I'd definitely talk to the local children's librarian okay. and teen librarian at public libraries. Sure. Uh, I would try and talk to the media specialist at uh, elementary and middle and high school libraries okay. uh, because those are people that are really passionate about getting kids to read. Yeah. And not all kids uh, like reading traditional books. They like the visual and the written together, uh, and that's how they enjoy absorbing stories. So talk to people locally. Uh, comics are becoming more and more accepted, that and graphic novels, as a legitimate means of uh, building collections in libraries. Yeah. So you could start locally. You could also go to your state associations because you'll meet more librarians at a state conference. Yeah. And don't restrict yourself just to your state. Try neighboring states as well, places within driving distance. Okay. Uh, the other thing is to try and get your books. Who would they contact at the state, state library association? Say if they don't have an artist alley and an artist is interested in trying to get a table there, like you mentioned. Um, uh, rather than getting an exhibitor booth, which can be quite expensive, I right, assume. Right, right. Uh, who do you who would you recommend they contact? To I try would to? I would talk to the executive director at the State Library Association. Okay. And find out what interest there might be in providing either free or very low cost tables yeah. for artists. Uh, not everyone has to pay the exhibitor fee. Right. that let's say a library vendor who's doing databases or uh, selling lots of uh, traditional books and materials yeah. to libraries and see if there's any interest. So I'd start off with the executive director. They may have you talk to somebody who's doing the exhibits arranging. Right. Uh, and you know, again, don't be discouraged if the first person you talk to is not necessarily the right person, but try and get them to lead you to the right person. Okay. Um, again, I would suggest uh, uh, at state uh, uh, library associations uh, going to surrounding state as well. Okay. Uh, and don't forget the state library. Uh, state libraries are agencies, every state has one. Usually they're headquartered in the state capital, uh, and they almost always will have something like a children's services coordinator or a teen coordinator or a youth services coordinator that are really connected to what's happening statewide in a library. You'll get a much broader perspective than your local library at that point. Okay. And uh, Rich mentioned that uh, PLA is pretty similar to ALAAC. Um, I just wanted to get your perspective on, um, firstly, is there an artist alley in PLA? Do you know? I haven't seen an artist alley. Okay. Um, I think it would be a phenomenal idea because there's so much programming in public libraries yeah. around comics and graphic novels these days. Yeah, Becca's uh, done a few herself, so yeah. 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 PLA, the Public Library Association, has a conference every other year, okay. and they travel around the country as ALA does, so they're always hitting 
different parts of the country. Um, I like the Public Library Association conference in a lot of ways better than the American Library Association. For me, it's much more focused and much more practical. ALA is like the big umbrella over everybody. PLA is just focused on public libraries. Right. And uh, I would definitely talk to the people at PLA. They're headquartered uh, in Chicago. And again, just do a Google search on Public Library Association and they'll uh, get you right to it. Okay. okay. So it's great to hear that that's also potentially an avenue for, for mm -hmm. us region librarians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, finally, would you have any advice to an artist who's considering tabling at ALA AC for the first time? Bring lots of stuff uh, to sell, uh, also to give away. Don't forget things like business cards make sure that you not only give your cards away but collect information from people